Hello, I'm Otis Corbett, and today I want to share a word about paying attention as I comment on Luke 11, verses 1 through 13. This passage reads, He was praying in a certain place. And after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a, a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? I'm sure we've all heard the joke about the fellow who said that he was so poor that he could not even pay attention. <laughs> He's probably a friend of the fellow who said, I'm such a poor musician that I can't even play the radio. Now, be that as it may, the ability to pay attention is actually an important life skill. For example, one year, a police department's annual report listed inattention to driving as the biggest cause of traffic accidents in their jurisdiction, and that was before the advent of cell phones. Now, no doubt the percentage of collisions caused by people not paying attention to their driving has gone up in recent years, mostly, of course, due to cell phones. But in other cases, we need to pay attention as well. For example, uh, some people need to pay attention when they enroll in a service on the internet. Uh, sometimes a web page is designed such that when a person thinks they're actually making a one-time purchase of a one-time service, they're actually agreeing to a subscription that's going to result in future charges to their credit card, whether that be done monthly, quarterly, or annually. And Really, some folks have lost a considerable amount of money that way because they didn't pay attention to the fine print on that web page. They didn't pay attention, and it cost them. Now, in our focal passage for today, our Lord was asked to teach His disciples how to pray. That's a natural request because, first of all, the disciples were learners, and Jesus was their teacher, and He had just finished praying. Well, we also know that on several occasions, Jesus used a prayer or a person who was praying as an object lesson. And therefore, the disciples knew that he had some specific and strong ideas about how one should pray. So, in response, Jesus taught his disciples what we often call the Lord's Prayer. Now, this might actually be a misnomer. See, Jesus was teaching the disciples how they should pray, not how he would pray. In, in fact, if we want to see how Jesus prayed, we might want to consider the high priestly prayer in the Gospel of John. And that's why some faith groups have called the prayer in Luke the model prayer or the family prayer. And regardless of what it's called, it shows us the things that God pays attention to in the lives of his followers. And what are those things? Well, first, God wants us to praise Him and see His kingdom advance. 
See, God is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all the praise and honor we are capable of giving Him and even more. Because He's all good, all wise, all loving, all pure, we should adore Him and praise Him. And we should want His ways to overcome the evil ways of the world. See, this is God's highest priority. And if God pays attention to those issues, so should we. Next, we see that God is concerned about us as people. He wants us to have our needs met, both our physical needs and our spiritual needs also. Remember, Jesus said He came to give us life, but not just life. He came to give us abundant life. And if God pays attention to the physical and spiritual and emotional and psychological needs of people, so should we. And finally, in the model prayer, we see that God pays attention to the trials and troubles in our lives. He had heard the groans of the Jews enslaved in Egypt. He had uh, responded to the needs of Job. It, he called out Nehemiah to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And Jesus healed the sick and made the lame to walk and made the blind to see. If God pays attention to the troubles of people, so should we. After Jesus finished giving the disciples a, an example of how to pray, He then took the opportunity to move on and to provide a teaching on what might actually be a more important point. Yes, those who follow God need to pay attention to the same things He does. However, as imperfect and frail human beings, it's unlikely that we will always get our prayers right. It's all unlikely that we'll always get our attitudes right. Sometimes we'll be totally selfish in our prayers and attitudes, and other times we'll forget to pray at all. Jesus, therefore, went on to remind us that the power in prayer doesn't reside in us, but in God. The power in prayer is not in us, it's in God. And Jesus used a common illustration of a neighbor asking for help at midnight to underline the most important part of prayer. See, the power in prayer does not consist of a specific form or a specific set of topics or of a specific schedule or even of a specific amount of passion. No, the power in our prayer comes from the specific God who pays attention to us, who hears us, and who answers us. Even though we often have to be excessively persistent in getting humans to pay attention to us, that's not necessary with God. And even though we as frail and sinful human beings give good things to our children, usually, we know sometimes that case isn't true, especially when it comes to child abuse. And even when we do give good things to our children, we can overdo that as well. I, I know of a couple who would send their children to stay with the grandparents over the summer, and when they came back home, they looked like butterballs because of how many treats they were given by their loving grandparents who overdid it and um, over-treated the children. God, however, gets everything right. He always hears us, and He always gives us the correct answer. Though we may feel at times that our prayers go no higher than the ceiling, that is never true. God hears us. He pays attention to us. And like the best parent in the world, He does the right thing for us only better than any human parent could ever do. So thank God today. Thank Him that He pays attention to us and take advantage of His attention by spending time with Him and conversing with Him. God wants to fellowship with His people. And when we feel distant from God, we can be sure that He isn't the one who moved. One last question before I close. If God pays attention to us, should we not pay attention to Him? I think the answer to that Rhetorical question is obvious, but I will give an answer anyway. Of course we should. Before I go, let me share my new book with you. Seminary taught me to be a pastor, but the Army taught me to be a leader. I would like to share how God melded those two skill sets in my new book, Decently and in Order. It's available now on Amazon in paperback and on Kindle. 
If you want to know more about effectively leading teams and events, check out Decently and in Order on Amazon.com. I believe you will find it eye-opening and helpful. That's Decently and in Order by Otis Corbett. Thanks for taking a look. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another word from the Bible we can share together. Every blessing. I'm Dr. Otis Corbett. Thank you.